Hello, today we're going to talk about the Mont Blanc 146. Now, this pen has been around for a long time, like the earliest versions are from the 1950s, and uh, what happened was, I, around half a year ago, I started using eBay, which was the worst decision of my entire life, because in the past half a year, I, my, my wallet has died. Found some at a decent price, and so I started, hey, that, 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 that's a nice price, start collecting, 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 culminating in um, around 13, eight, around, that's around 10 one four sixes. So it's got a lot of history. Uh, there are a lot of versions. If you go online, there, there are people out there who have categorized, done all the research and said, like, here's how it's changed throughout time. It's a sort of super nerdy history thing just, just to say, oh, I, I, I have like 146s from the 50s, 70s, 80s, 90s, older, newer generation, later, newer generation. There's a whole bunch. I understand why this, this, this could be a divisive topic because the first issue here is the one that many people have, which, which is, oh, Mont Blanc, this is just all brand, all marketing, uh, the, the pens, for the pens overpriced. And yes, I agree. That is pretty much how I felt for a long time. I'm never ever paying that much for 146. But with eBay, you know, secondhand, secondhand market is a little bit more doable compared to new ones. And so please take all this stuff I'm going to talk about with the qualifier that all my pens uh, were secondhand. For what I paid for my 146s, I like the size. I think the 149 is a little bit too big for me. Let's show one here. Yeah, this one. So, so this is a 146. It is a reasonable size. It's got a thickness, it's got a shape, and there is subtlety in the shape. Here's your comparison. It's about, it's about the same size as a 2580 but with different uh, cap and body proportions. And here's an M800, which is like the other lovely flagship to compare them to. What attracted me to Mont Blanc, or, or, or just Western pens in general, are the fatter, wetter, broad nibs. I don't need an EF in a Western size. I, I have my Sailors, my Platinums, my, my, my Pilots that they do EF, really EF, and really well. I mean, Mont Blanc EFs are good, but I don't, they're, they're still a tad, a tad thicker than, than, than what I need. I mean, I can still enjoy them, I just need, I just don't need it for that. What, where the Japanese lack are in the BBs, the OBBs, the italic zone, that sort of stuff. So that's basically what I was hunting down. And so this is your know, typical 146, which you think is a 146 uh, and looks like a newer one. Mostly, although the the cap, this this end curvature, the the, the cap curvature, and, and and the end piston lines do differ from from generation to generation. This is a very normal 80s one. It's got a monotone nib. It's got a clear single ink window, and. Yeah, the, 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 those are the main two identifying features. Uh, newer ones have this straight ink window, which is slightly harder to produce, but it's fancier. Uh, and it's a bicolor nib for the regular line ones anyway. You could have a lot of fun just chasing down all the various generations. For me, I'll, I'll, I'm just looking at nibs because technically speaking, I'm hopefully still chasing the writing experience and not the collecting experience as much despite what recent evidence may may suggest. So I have a BB, I have an OBB. Someone found for me a decent deal on the 146R, the burgundy version. It's the same thing. Um, these ones were made in the 90s and they were, there, there are two generations which you can tell the difference by looking at the feed, uh, that the fins look slightly different, no, no big deal. But it's a pretty color. Now we think it's a pretty color. The reason why they stopped making them was apparently was because no one liked the red ones back then, so they stopped making them. So now they're rare, or at least less common. And then after a few of these, a few months ago, someone linked me to, to a different listing, a listing I could not say no to, and that's where this box comes in. 
This is the this is a Mont Blanc Meisterstück nib selection set. It. Ta-da! That is exactly what you think it is. That's what you usually find in a boutique. And the way that you try out all the nib sizes, E, F, F, M, B, 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 O, M, O, B, O, B, B, and S. These are eight 146s and a 145. Um, you can you pretty much know what all these nib sizes are. The S, which they say special, is actually uh, the Kugel nib, which is like the ball, the, the very ball pointed nib, which nets you right from almost any angle with a line. There is no line variation, it's just a big ball with a lot of sweet spot going on. Uh, the rest of these are just 146s. They have engraved on their body test hyphen nib size. And I've been playing around this for a good few months. But the only one which I've actually inked is like the OBB. Uh, I usually don't keep it in this box because it's it, it's too big and it's too heavy. And, 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 and the lining is getting a little bit old. Maybe that's why someone got rid of it and, and put it up for sale. The, in the modern test sets, there's no S nib. I mean, ostensibly what happens is you go to a boutique, you buy a pen, and then you can ask for a, a change of nib size, obviously. Most boutiques will have plenty of extra fines, fines and mediums, maybe broads, but the double broads or the obliques are slightly rarer and, and they'll, they'll have to take back your pen, send it over to Germany or whatever, and get the nib swapped. Free of charge. And maybe they also used to allow swaps for the Kugel nib, the special Kugel nib, but that is no longer an option. Let me see the test special over here. That's not, that's not an option anymore. So, so the test sets you see now are like eight, eight pence. Uh, apparently there are 149 tester sets also available. I, I can't afford them. Um, and also, uh, Mont Blanc also offer what we call the bespoke nib, yeah. Bespoke nib service where for an exorbitant amount of money, you can get a nib size in whatever you want. At a price, that, that, that's pretty much it. And, and those ones use 146 somethings. I think solitaires or duos or something, the, 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 the metal cap ones. Anyway, so that's that. So I, in my position, I have a large number of 146s. Naturally, the first thing I did with this nib set was do a writing sample. And you can see it right here, where you can see the basic vertical and horizontal strokes and basic writing sample. As you can see from, from, from the writing sample, uh, the, the EF is actually pretty fine. The, the, the cool nitpicky stuff is you can sort of see like how many base nib nibs they make and then they grind it to like the specific, uh, specific, specific shape. In this case, it totally looks like the EF is its own is its own nib molding or whatever. And then the, the Fs and Ms are basically, they basically come from the same, from the same nib except they take the M and then they grind it a little bit finer into an F and so on and so forth. The broads, double broads, oblique mediums, Oblique broads and oblique double broads all have stubby line variation to two different extents. Obviously the BB and the OBB offer the most line variation. If you want to know what it feels like, it's like having a regular 1.1 millimeter steel, but because it's gold, or in the case because it's a modern gold nib, it's slightly softer and maybe slightly wetter. So it, it, it's a fairly comfortable experience. I, I like using the BBs and the OBBs. Obviously, I did not ink up all of these just for your benefit. I have my 146R inked up with uh, the Mumbox ink of Nautora. It's sort of like Okuyama with, with, with yellow sheen. Where should I put these? I'm gonna put this box away. Oh, goodbye box. You had your chance at stardom. It's time for Leo's very bad scale. I would, let's say, cut paper. This is a totally different scale from last time. This is a new and improved. I'm just kidding, I'm making it on the spot. Smidge of variation. I would put it pretty much, I would call this, this is a one, four, six. B. 
This is fairly wet, you can see that the ink comes out in amounts sufficient enough to create consistent sheen. It's soft. This means that when you write with it, even if the nib is crisp, because it's, it's slightly wet and soft, you will have slightly less line variation as a result, which is not necessarily a bad thing because the softness and the ink, the amount of ink flow, makes for a very smooth writing experience. Like regular office work, I don't see the DB being useful. The fatter ones are maybe for letter writing or diary writing on, on paper that is fountain pen friendly. So that's the nib experience other way. The other major feature which these pens have over Japanese pens, or most Japanese pens, is the piston filler. They are all piston fillers. They work very well. I, I think the 146 is a great design. The piston fillers are functional. This is a modern version, you can see the lined ink window. Uh, they are very good piston fillers. They are also the most imitated model or style in, in history. That's an overstatement, ignore that. Let's just say they are a very oft copied model and shape. I think this is prettier than the one that, that, than the 2580. I mean, there's a lot more cap compared to the body. It's not quite half half, it's like 4060. Whereas the 580 is has a slightly shorter cap and a much longer body. Close relative of the, of the 146, the Pilot 823 copies it to an extent. Except the 146 has curves all the way around. The, 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 there's very little actual just boring flatness. Whereas the 823 has a little bit more straight lines going on, which is fairly subtle. Well, it doesn't matter too much unless you're getting into the nitty gritty of stuff. Having said that, I still really like this. The A23 is a little bit different from all the other pilots. It's not cartridge converter, so it's got that going for it. If you compare the bodies, the 146, it's got the curves. It's, it, it's like what I say about the, the, the Sailor Pro Gear. The Pro Gear, even though it has a worse ink system, the, the, the 146 is slightly less chubby, but it still has some curves going on. It's nice to look at. If there were any other pen with similar curves, I would say the same thing. I, I've talked about this with a lot of other, other people, other collectors, and, and they're like, yes, the, the 146 it, it is pretty much a very beautiful and well-made instrument. I know they say we use precious resin, whatever. doesn't matter. This is, this is solid, solid. This is some good plastic. Uh, it lasts a long time. Any potential problems? If you are like me and you want to go start hunting 146s online, you must be careful of the main basic issues. The new ones, not so many problems. The old ones, um, the ones with the monotone nibs and whatever, and, and these solid ink windows, you have to be super careful about... This is a stress point. Sometimes you develop cracks here. If the previous user has tightened too hard. Places where you have two layers of of material like the outside section and the inside collar a bit where the nib and the feet set in. Sometimes, you know, expansion and contraction, you there may be hairlines. Good sellers, you have to pay more, but they will tell you there are no hairline cracks on the section. There are no cracks on like the chips on the on, on the on the cap or whatever. If you're super finicky about this stuff, make sure you can actually see an ink window. It's an old pen. If you see ink there, you have no idea how long ink has been there. It could have been decades. There's a large chance that either A, ink has leaked behind and it started like corroding the pistons and whatever, you have to get replaced, or the ink has stayed on the nib for a long time and you'll get severe oxidation. And, and, and that's where you see the super ugly, like brownish nibs. So yes, there, there, obviously there will be risks associated with chasing older pens. Those are the basics, just the cap. Do you know if the piston works? The good sellers will have a photo of the piston down at the ink window. The bad ones with the fuzzy photos they might be cheaper. You are going to be taking a risk. I am not taking any responsibility for you buying a dud product. Don't send them to me. I don't have the stuff to, to open this. You can get replacement parts and replacement tools, like tools that help you open this stuff. I admit that when I first got my first 146, I was like, yes, I now have this luxury product. There is a certain amount of hype for these products. I can see why some people would like them a lot. I can also see why people would say, hey, they're overpriced. For example, 
on many Japanese pens, I will still see the manufacturing mold seams. They didn't uh, swing it away. All these copies, none, nothing. It, it, it's all, it's off that smooth. They, they took the extra effort. Is it worth the extra money of a new one? That's up to you. For me, second hand, a little bit of polish, a little bit of work. So yeah, that's a one for, no. That's a one for six and the box, but that's totally a collector piece. You, 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 people see it like, whoa, and then I only ink like one out of eight pens. So yeah, so the Mont Blanc Mont Physics, uh, it's a very well-made pen, both in the design and the, and the mechanisms and the construction and the materials. Is it a must-have in your collection? No. I mean, if, if you don't like it, I'm talking the shape, whatever, because they only make the, 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 these round ones. You're not missing out. I'm, I'm sure you can find the nib sizes you want in a shape you like. For me, this is a good shape. So that's why I have a few. A few. So I found a machine which prints out stuff from your in from any Instagram. Obviously, we have to do this for science inquisitive. Well, yes. In case you guys don't know, I have been running a I have been running an Instagram where I post once every day. Uh, it's like twenty for two. Ten dollars. That's ten dollars. That's. Seven dollars a photo. Like this one. Uh, I'll take a Dambo. I don't need my nib stuff. Let's do some Dambo and Mont Blanc. Five photos. Okay, one more. But I have so many photos. That's fine. That's six photos. That's for fifty dollars. Press next. And I have options. I can make it vertical with some text. I can. Make it horizontal, but that looks weird. Oh no, it's not a good crop. I can just have it without the text. Wait, S S pen? Spend? What? Did it zoom in? Oh, oh. 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 What do I do now? Press forward. Next. <laughs> Please enter money. 20. They're recognizing? Yeah, 40. 10. Wait, printing photos. One minute, can we like, oh, go, no, we are not watching this thing go down for like a whole minute. Or, or, or me just... You have to talk. Have to for, talk. For, for one minute, 50. Thank you for watching my Mont Blanc Mont Blanc Six review. It took a lot of effort, a lot of time. Oh, wait, you got something. Oh, we got something. You did? Oh. 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 Is this a sticker? The print quality is not... Bad. It's like a a, a luster finish. Luster, yeah. Um. So we know it does solid colors just fine. Oh, there's another one. Uh. You know, it's really hard to tell if it's a crap printer or if it's because it's taking off the crap resolution of Instagram. <laughs> Uh, colors are okay. It suffers in the dark areas, the, especially the grays are that differentiate. Anyway, but, but, but for, for plain colors, it's pretty good. For normal people, it's fine. It's a great system. It's not expensive. Unfortunately, the guy behind the camera does really nice prints, and so I've been pampered. It's hilarious. I'm going to give these to, to my friend or something. Here, have a photo of my pens. Yes, you must now stick this somewhere important in your life.